I'll be giddy about it. <laughs> Why are you smiling, Jim? I, I'm going to be giddy about it for a while, though. I mean, there's a reason not to be. We got we got to spend an hour and a half talking to Dr. Erin McDonald about Star Trek and her <laughs> life and all of her stuff that's going on. How, how can you not be giddy about that, man? I mean, every time we finish one of these episodes, I'm on like cloud nine. It takes me like an hour and a half to come down off the high just talking to amazing people about their experiences and all the connectivity to Star Trek. Right. And for everyone who knows, we said it before. I know you don't realize it, but the minute the podcast ends for you, me and Jim keep talking. We never stop 24 seven about Star Trek Adventures. And so we've been talking for exactly 168 hours about Dr. Aaron McDonald. (laughs) And uh, we can't wait to have her back on the show again. Yeah, we just can't stop talking about it because there's just so much. It's like day in and day out. There's always something new to talk about, whether it's a new uh, a new novel or a new video game like Resurgence just came out recently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's always something new coming out for Star Trek and, uh, it, it just, it just, the conversation never ends. Like you say, Michael, we live in good times. In fact, it's funny, uh, last night I had the pleasure, you know, when, when I have my RPG team, the tabletop, they get so excited. Cause again, everybody, uh, I have seven players now, two of them. Um, are are familiar with Star Trek, my wife being one of them, because she is inflicted with being existing with me. So she knows way more than, about Star Trek than she ever wanted to know. And then another one of the players um, grew up watching Voyager and, you know, is familiar with the franchise. The other five players were virgins to Star Trek once they started playing the game. So one of the happiest things that happens is after every game, most of them usually stick around last night, everyone did to watch some Star Trek. And they're like, hey, we want to understand the concepts a little better. So they first picked the Voyager episode where Balana and the Prelor, she finds the robots. Because I said, well, this is going to be a good one for Prime Directive for you. They loved it. We were arguing, they were taking votes about what the character should do every 15 minutes at stop. I'd pause and say, okay, what would you do at this point? They were getting into it. But then After that episode ended, two people left. The rest wanted to stick around and wanted to watch the original Captain Pike episode from the original series remastered on Netflix. Mm. That was intense. I was like, they're getting it. Once they know kind of the story and the narrative flow of Star Trek, I was so amazed that a show from 1966 still carried. They didn't care. In fact, some of them said, I actually prefer the buttons on there. It's, they said it feels more clunky like you're in a submarine. I went, yeah, exactly. So to me, Star Trek is just amazing how it just carries on and on, you know, through the decades. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've been working my way through. Oh, you know what? We should probably do our introductions before you. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we're always yeah, exactly. Well, if anybody's responsible and you've been listening since podcast number one, we've introduced ourselves over 80. To, let's see. As of today, uh, 84 times. This is our 84th introduction. I'm Michael Dismuke, freelance star, uh, writer for <laughs> Star Trek Adventures RPG. I'm also a blogger on continuing missions, which is the number one fan site for Star Trek RPG. And uh, I also. So I'm a podcaster because I'm on the show that you're watching. Continue conversations with Jim Johnson. Hey, everybody. Jim Johnson. I'm the project manager and line editor for the Star Trek Adventures RPG, published by Modiphius Lobby's seven and a half years now. Co-host on this year's show with Michael, uh, 80 plus episodes strong. And uh, if you had told me a year and a half ago that we'd still be doing this, I think I might have given you a side eye and said, uh, I don't think we have enough material to talk for 80 odd episodes, year and a half going on two years now. Uh, but somehow we managed to find amazing guests to have on the show yes. and we find ma- amazing co- conversation pieces to talk about. And here we are for more. And so and uh, did I tell you my nine year old or 10 year old yeah. friend's kid came up to me the other day and went, Jim Johnson. You, you mentioned that a couple episodes ago. <laughs> oh, OK. And, uh, I, I, I that's me, hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't remember what episode you started doing that in, but it's just it's kind of carried on. It's uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it, it's funny that he remembers it though, and came and came up, to you, came up to you with it. That's just great. in the morning, he came up. I was at my friend's house, and he went, "Jim Johnson, I mean, are you listening to my podcast?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Wow." Awesome. <laughs> at least somebody is, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's our one fan. <laughs> hey, you know, you start, you gotta start with one, right? Work your way up. We, exactly. we, we've seen we've seen the game grow over the last couple of years, and uh, one one fan at a time. That's how you do it. 
And you know, um, it's not even growing, it's evolving because today is actually a huge announcement. So I'm going to let Jim, I want you to take it because I want you to talk about how we got to the point of what we're announcing today, because this yeah. is gaming history. Well, you know, it's funny because like we're recording this before the announcement comes out and this will air a week after <laughs> the, the pre order is already mm -hmm. launched. So it's kind of weird. I mean, we're introducing it, but we're not really introducing it because we're introducing it to ourselves and talking about it, but it's, by the time this comes out, it'll already be, well, not to say old news, but- Our enthusiasm is infectious right? though. Our yeah. enthusiasm is get people to go back to the link and click it again. So about Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking all about Captain's Log tonight. And uh, this, is a, this is a product that we've been very quiet about. Like everybody has honored their NDAs, which I'm always very, very proud of and very impressed by. You know, as the as the team grows and more people get involved, like there's more people that could spill the beans, and somehow we've managed to keep the the opsec on this one pretty tight. Um, but uh, Captain's Log, yeah, this is a, a solo RPG. So if you're familiar with some of the other ones that are out there, like uh, Iron Sworn and Starforge Iron Sworn and uh, the Solo RPG Guide, and there's a bunch of other ones out there, I'm sure. Um, I don't remember all of them. I've got a bunch of them on my shelf. I've enjoyed them. Uh, I've read them and played them. Um, but uh, yeah, so we decided. Gosh, it must have been it must have been the fall of 21, maybe. Um, um, uh, Cam and Sam, uh, two of the two of the lead people at Modifius said, "Hey, we want to we want you to to see if you can do a feasibility study on a solo RPG of Star Trek Adventures." And of course, that means I have to go into you know I have to do a budget line, I have to figure out the feasibility. Like, is this a product that we could make? How big would it be? What's involved in making it? All this stuff, and then when do I think I could make it in time to release it? Right. So that's a, that's a whole process. It's all agile methodology if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so we went through this, and um, yeah, it turned out it was feasible, and and they then they greenlit it. So I started working on it, and uh, got uh, got some people involved, and uh, I got you involved as the lead writer. So uh, I was excited to uh, give you that opportunity, and I, I'd love to hear before we go into much more detail about what Captain's Log is. Just what what was your reaction to to being involved on it and uh, and having an opportunity to kind of like help me lead this thing into the into where we were going with it? Yeah, well, let's start with a little foundation one on one about solo RPG because this yeah. this will be why I was so thrilled with the idea. So. I think like most diehard game masters, I've been doing solo RPG for almost 30 years, meaning I didn't have friends sometimes. And so I sit there with my dice and I have my character sheets and I go ahead and run a story in my head. And so unintentionally, I've been into solo RPG. And I think a lot of people are like that, actually, that are out there. Now, what's interesting is, you know, I keep up, um, especially since doing the continuing uh, missions blog on what's going out, going on in the tabletop RPG industry. And I've been following people who do solo RPG and have really organized it. Now there's, I'm going to plug some people because I would love to one day have them on, on the show, even though I'm not sure if they played Star Trek adventures yet, but voice actor Trevor Duvall does a show called me, myself and die. And if you watch him, if you're wondering what solo RPG looks like and the energy of it, look it up on YouTube, me, myself and die. Um, and it blew my mind because he takes it to a whole nother level. So I was already watching this. Now, all of a sudden, one day, Jim Johnson calls me, <laughs> sends me a message and says, hey, we're going to be doing a solo RPG for Star Trek. Why was this so awesome to me? And correct me if I'm wrong, because anybody out there, I don't think there's a major IP that's done a solo RPG book yet. They've done RPG books, but I've yet to see a major IP like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Transformers or Star Wars that had a solo RPG book. So like you said, there's Star Forge, which is amazing. Iron Forge is amazing. Those are some I'm familiar with. Um, but when you asked this, I was like, yes, this is the time. It's groundbreaking. And for someone who's done solo RPG unintentionally my whole life, being able to design a system that would help help design a system and work with writers to to do what we what what you've done and the team has done with Star Trek Adventures 2D20 I was like over the top. So for all of you if you don't not sure what solo RPG is check out me myself and die but we're going to be covering over the next couple of weeks everything about the captain's logbook um and and how it's constructed and hopefully you know answering your questions too because we're on social media so we look forward um as this takes off um going where Star Trek has never gone before Star Trek RPG that that 
it's exciting adventure for all of you. I've already been playing it because I can't, I couldn't talk about it because the NDA. So I've been playing it profusely and having a ball, but yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just say, Michael, you know, I, like yourself, I, I, I've been a writer for as long as I can remember. A lot of that I can, I can attribute to both Star Trek and RPGs. Right. Uh, uh, Cause like my friends, when I was in high school, like we'd, be, we'd play a lot of D and D and Star Frontiers and Marvel superheroes. And um even though we were in high school and we had a lot of free time, we'd play, you know, different games a couple of times a week. Right. But it wasn't enough. Right. Cause I was, I was growing up, I was budding. I had all this creativity. I needed an outlet. So I would just, I would just start writing my own stories. Right. Just, you know, I would, I would take my characters and I would just throw them into situations it had nothing to do with the game that we were playing at the time. But it was just like, I need to get this story out of my head and develop the story and, and come up with it. And then, you know, Star Trek came out and uh, and I got more involved with Star Trek and, you know, started reading the writer's Bibles and just starting to learn how they constructed story and how things happen for a reason and how to start thinking about plotting and, and character and world building and all this stuff. Um, I have all of that to thank to RPGs and Star Trek, but more than anything else that I can think of. Um, and so, like you, I've been doing solo RPGing for 30 blah, blah, blah years and uh, i mean even with uh, like my super in my head the super successful star trek rpgs that i've been a part of over the decades um we i mean there was one where we were playing like every week consistently but still that wasn't enough and so i'd still be like i, I come i come home after a session and i'd be cranking out short stories or, or little vignettes or just drabbles of story and, and drabbles of scenes and stuff that my character was involved in or that the other characters were involved in and um, it's only until recently, within the last couple of years, I mean, really, honestly, it was when uh, when they said, let's do a solo RPG of Star Trek, uh, that I really started investigating some of the other ones that are out there. Because this has only really been a thing that's happened in the last, I don't know, five, right. ten years or so. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, choose your own adventure is one thing. That's a little different because it's a little more structured. <laughs> um, but this was like, oh, you're, you're like making up stories and you're rolling random tables and you've got these whole like oracles and... And 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 what what we call prob prob probability matrices, mm -hmm. like help you pull pieces together, and then you start using your creativity to string it all together. And I was like, oh, this is like a whole quantum level of yeah. storytelling. And I, I want to respect. I do want to respect. It's new. It's being popular in the last five to ten years, probably because of the internet and stuff like that. But in my research historically, there have been little staples, stapled together solo RPG guides. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, but these are not have not been widely published. Um, I again, in all the game stores I ever went to, did I ever see a solo RPG thing five ten years ago? No, you know. So, so this is an interest. This is really again. I'm going to say it's groundbreaking. Um, and I think it's even almost historically appropriate now the time to do this, especially with all the ability people have now to write in different mediums, the more opportunities coming out there um, for, you know, previously marginalized people. Like, how do you get your chops on how a story should flow? Mm -hmm. Solo RPG is a great way to learn how to do it. And I know we're going to talk about it. And Captain's Log, I wrote um, the sections that I contributed to. I purposely wrote so that you learn how to tell a story. Mm -hmm and all the different ways to tell a story and keep a hook. Because believe me, if you're bored playing solo RPG, bored by your own game, you're definitely boring your audience. So this really this really is a way to learn, hey, I need a little bit more conflict. And we'll talk about that. We're gonna break down the chapters, but I just want everyone to know this was fun for me because I know I've done it in some of the 2D20 books, uh, Game Master's Guide, Player's Guide, Utopia, Planitia, Lower Decks. I've had the opportunity to write about writing, but this one is the book I felt that where I, I put everything into it. Um, and so did all the other writers who contributed um, to how to tell a really good story. So it's a really exciting event. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I'm going to be, honestly, I'll be really curious to see how this hits because like we've been on social media for this game for years now. And I know that I have seen a lot of people asking questions like, I want, I, I can't, like, I'm a, I'm a lifelong game master. I really want to play the game. I can't find anybody in my area or online to run it for me. So I'm really frustrated. Can I play Star Trek Adventures solo? Like, how would I do it? Like, how, how would I do it? And so we, I've seen a handful of those questions over the last, especially, I mean, especially in the last couple of months. And we've, yeah, had, been you know, weird. <laughs> we've had to, like, we've had to just say nothing. Cause it's like, Oh, but just, just wait a couple of months. Oh, but um, so uh, like, I know there's a, especially because of the pandemic, right. There's a lot of people who want to play this game, but need a little easing into it, or, or maybe they just can't find somebody to run it for them. They, they don't know how to pull a group together, whatever. 
but they are budding creators. Maybe they're like fiction writers, fanfic writers. Maybe they just they just have that bug, right? They want to tell their own Star Trek stories. And of course, why wouldn't you? Because it's such an amazing franchise. It's, it's so deep. It's been around for six, almost 60 years now. There's, I mean, why not tell your own stories in it? Make your own captain go, go crazy. Have something amazing happen. And um, so I'm really curious to see how this hits because we're giving you all the tools that you need in, 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 in one book, one standalone book. Like we're not, I don't expect us to do any supplemental products for Captain's Log because what else do you need? I mean, it's, it's all there. And we'll go in other episodes, we'll talk about combining Captain's Log with all of the other products in the Star Trek Adventures <laughs> line. I'm sure we'll spend all night riffing on this stuff at right. some point. I have a question. I have a question for you. For for Modifius, what made them decide to do a solo RPG in the first place? Not even just Star Trek Adventure, but but was there something happening in the industry that piqued their interest, or is is this an experiment? Uh, I cannot speak for the people that asked me to pull the feasibility together. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's 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 a dash of an experimentation. Uh, cause I mean, just a little inside, you know, inside sauce, uh, Star Trek adventures has kind of been, um, the idea generator for Modiphius for a while where they want to experiment with things. They'll say, well, you know, Star Trek is a, is a steady line that's not going anywhere. And let's, let's experiment with it a little bit. Cause we, we do have a little bit of flexibility where, you know, happily we haven't had a supplement you know kind of bomb out yet right and um so we, we have some room to experiment so we were like well let, let's try a solo rpg and uh at the moment i mean other than maybe well maybe maybe fallout maybe dune we don't really have a line in the in the company that it really makes sense to do a solo R- rpg for right because like of all the stuff that medipius does i think star trek is the the, the singular one that does storytelling like really super well. And I, I may be getting angry, dirty faces from some of the people at Magipius, but <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think Star Trek is really uniquely suited to solo storytelling because you can have one character going off on amazing stories and adventure. I mean, we see it all the time on the show, right? You think right. about like, um, 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 Picard. Know, yeah, Picard, right? He's got that whole inner light, yeah. right? That, that whole inner light is a great example of an episode that you can do solo RPG because it's just yeah. about that character, right? Yeah. Going on this huge, amazing story. And then comes back to the to the to the ship, and in 45 minutes of an episode, he's lived in a lifetime, right? Yeah. That's an amazing story, um, and you can do that with Captain's Log because you can do literally anything your imagination can conceive of, and if your imagination needs a little bit of a jump start, we've got random tables, we've got tools, we've got tricks, we've got stuff packed into the book that can help you. Like if you need that spark, you need mm-hmm. you need that one idea to to have you spark and go off and running. Like as a writer, and I'm sure Michael, you can identify with this. Sometimes I might be staring at the blank page, working on an outline or working on a story or something. And it's like, I'm missing something and I'm just going to kind of stare at the wall or I'm going to let my mind wander. I'll play a video game and let my my subconscious percolate. And then as soon as I get that one little idea, that one little spark, I'm off and running for you know thousands of thousands of words or whatever. And so the, mm-hmm. the pro- probability matrices that we've built into this book are, are meant to be that spark, right? Like if you need a little help, grab your D20s roll on a, on a particular table. Hopefully that'll give you a spark and then you're off and running. Yeah. And we'll be talking about that too. Cause one of the things when, for those, you know, people who I've never had writer's block, it's the weirdest thing. And I think the reason why is at some young age playing RPG, I figured out when it gets boring, break something. I don't care what it is, but just break something. Your kid, you can have somebody riding down the street on a bike in your story. And you're like, man, all of a sudden this conversation is getting really boring with the other character, break the tire, have someone fly over the handlebars and hit their head. <laughs> it happens all day long and the story still yeah. has to move on. But, but um, we're going to talk a, a, about that. I have one other question about the development of this book too. Was there any question marks that came from Paramount when you pitched a solo RPG? Um, no, not at all. Interesting. Okay. They, they, they absolutely, they totally went with the flow. I mean, we have such a great relationship with the team over at Paramount. Mm-hmm. They, you know, when we, when we sent them the, the first draft and I explained to them, you know, in a, in a short, um, you know, a, you know, bit of, di- bit of conversation, what we were doing with it. They were like, Oh yeah. Okay. Totally. Totally makes sense. Go, That's good go trust. And they, did the, yeah. they did the review and, you know, uh, Scott did his review and everybody else. Uh, and, and it was fine. So, you know, they had absolutely no problems with it um at all and in fact uh, they they really appreciate and respect the fact that we've been able to expand the franchise into new 
venues. I mean, the RPG, uh, a tabletop RPG um, hits an audience that a lot of their other licensees don't. Um, because like, I mean, cer- certainly the video games and the board games and the card games scratch this particular itch for, for, for Star Trek fans and for gamers, right? Um, uh, RPGs, uh, tabletop RPGs, I think, hit a slightly different itch because there's a, a little bit of crossover that you can play with, right? It's not just gaming and it's not just collaborative storytelling with your friends, but it's also that whole kind of like, as a, as a gamer, as a player and a game master in Star Trek Adventures, you could be a producer, a director, a writer, a scientist, like all these different roles that they have involved in creating those episodes, science, you know, sound effects, visuals, whatever. You can do all those roles while you're playing the game, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that creates that that scratches enough different creative itches that that's what makes it appealing to a lot of people, right? Is like like because like as as a game master, like I'm producing the show, I'm directing some of the episodes, I'm writing some of the episodes, mm-hmm. and I've also got a writer's team because my writer team happens to be my players, right? right. And we're all collaboratively doing the same together. So there's there's a lot of different itches that a, that a tabletop RPG scratches that a a video game can't. And there's nothing right. there's slight against video games. But like you only have a limited amount of control over what that story is going to be because a lot of it has to be canned and then presented to you that you kind of play through. And, and, and like no matter how good a video game is, it's never going to match the creativity of a tabletop RPG. And uh, until at some point, you know, maybe AI gets to the point where it can do it. Hey, and, Apple just released some new tech. <laughs> Apple released some new crazy technology. Uh, We're one uh, step closer here, to the holodeck. Sky, Skynet's coming and Skynet's yeah. coming. <laughs> So I want to play games and then it's going to kill us all. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to talk about, you know, the creative team on this. Of course, it rests on the back of Nathan Dowdell, who's the 2D20 um, system designer for Star Trek Adventures. And I want to say that because we we the design team for this, um, I should say that the log, the captain's log rules development team had to refer a lot to Nathan Dowdell's system 2D20, which was meant for group play and had to transform that into something that works for solo RPGs. So so first of all, thank you again, Jim, because this was the first time I've ever done lead writing um, on an RPG, especially creating and, uh, you know, adapting a rule system. Um, I'll tell you again, it was the scariest thing I've ever done. And I praise the ground you walk on because I don't know how you juggle five of these projects at a time. This was quite a heavy lift. So um, I, I enjoyed being done with it i remember you used to say you used to you still say that when you get done with a project you wipe it out of your mind because you're moving on to the next one and i i felt that for the first time i was so exhausted yeah. um i did but um the the captain logs rules development team was myself josh allen which is super awesome there's a story behind that and when he comes on i'll I'll, I want him to tell his story about his getting involved with this. Allison Seib, um, you, of course, and Samantha Webb, who leads, I forget the name of the game, Samantha leads uh, on Twitch. Uh, well, she's running a, a Shackleton game right now. Uh, correct, she's correct. She's also involved in uh, Black, Hat, Black Hat's gaming, and uh, she's the, the head of brand development at, uh, at um, uh, Modifius. Right. But they are running. uh, Samantha is running the the uh, Star Trek game on on, if you go to this discord, they promote it there on Twitch. That's the Star Trek Shackleton game. So, yeah. And I think I I think by the time this episode airs, I think that that will have wrapped. Um, I think they're closing in on their final episode if they haven't already done it, Uh, because I think they're 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 doing their show the same time we record these. Uh, So, uh, yeah, so she's she's been involved in Star Trek from the Star Trek Adventures. Uh, from the beginning. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. So Captain's Log, that was the rules development team. Um, but then additional writing came in from Rachel Cruz, Nathan Dowdell, Keith Garrett, John Kennedy, Fred Love, Chris McCarver, Aaron Paulier, Jacob Ross, and Al Spader. So this was a huge team to yeah. that collaborated to make this happen. So again, a big thank you to all of those contributions in in you know starting this groundbreaking game. Yeah. And I'll 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 add that that some of those names um this is just the nature of the work that we're doing and, and particularly the nature of captain's log. Um, those of you who are following Star Trek adventures and are familiar with Star Trek adventures and our, and our lengthy, you know, extensive product line. Um, I want to, I want to be forthright and transparent that uh, a fair chunk of this book was, was adapted from the player's guide, the game master guide and the core rule book. Right. In some cases, we we did a straight lift, and in a lot of cases, I did a top-down edit on certain sections. 
But because the audience for this book, it was very specific, we already had a lot of this content that we had developed over the last few years for the Player Guide, Game Master Guide, and so on and so forth. And so I, I want to be careful that, that like longtime fans of Star Trek Adventures, um, I know there's going to be a cadre of you saying, oh, darn it, I'm, pay I'm paying for this content again. Uh, understand that you were not the target audience of this book, <laughs> right? We are. We were aiming this book very, very much. And again, it's a standalone product. We're aiming it very much at, at new fans of Star Trek, new fans of Star Trek Adventures, and casual fans who might be curious about Star Trek, want to scratch a creative itch, want to you know write their own stories, you know, develop their own characters, that kind of stuff. So we really, we really from the very beginning treated this like a core rule book, like a core rule book, standalone in and of itself. And one of the one of the the necessities of a core rule book is that there are certain pieces that have to be in that core rule book in order for it to function, right? We had to have character generation. We had to have starship generation. We had to provide enough background of the setting so that somebody completely new to Star Trek could read this and go, okay, I, I get it. I get I get the basics of the fan, the science fiction franchise. And now I can go, you know, watch a couple episodes and now I can go off and running. So yes, uh, and... Yes. I got it. That's it. I have to say, yes, Sam, because I know one of the big points of discussions with the writing team. And I asked the question, I said, how am I? And I remember myself and Al having this discussion was what would get me to buy this book if I'm already into Star Trek Adventures 2D20? It was a heavy discussion because if I'm not convinced about something, I'm like this at work. I don't do it. If I'm not sold, I ain't selling it to anyone else. That's how I've always felt about anything I work on. And so some of the things that we're going to talk about um, over this series and we get into that that is distinct to Captain's Log so that even if you wanted to use it to su supplement your 2D20 team adventure was gathering probability, we call the oracles, probability matrices. So the random tables, we went through, I scoured the entire collection of 2D20 uh, of, of Star Trek Adventures to see which ones would be appropriate to gather into the appendix of this book, which is called the probability matrices. In addition to being able to use it in a current game, if you needed to generate stories for your team. So the, the probability matrices is the best gathering you're gonna find of oracles, uh, I'm calling them oracles or probably matrixes, random tables, um, so that I would want to pick it up to help me with story prompts, or if I can't think of a complication or how to spin threat, or I need a new location generated or an alien species, uh, alien creatures, beasts of the galaxy, it's all put in here. So it is a cheat sheet all in one compendium. And then the other thing it did that I wanted to do, I did, like I said at the outset, I wanted to make sure that if I wanted to learn about Star Trek storytelling, that I finally had taken all the good bits plus some and put it into one thing so that uh, someone who's playing the solo RPG doesn't need to buy any of the other supplements when it comes to learning how to storytell. So it is a cheat sheet. Again, you got the matrixes, which is new. And then you have the um, the playing captain's log section, which is basically how to write a Star Trek story um, comprehensive. So those are some things that it, it could be a good supplement. And you'll we'll be highlighting some of those Easter eggs and different things in the upcoming episodes. Yep, absolutely. So so hopefully, you know, the, the longtime Star Trek Adventures fans, hopefully they'll they'll get that and they'll forgive us for for repeating some content. I thought it was necessary uh to do that, mainly because of the target audience for this thing. But I think there's just enough content in here that that I mean, me as a game master for Star Trek Adventures, I am absolutely gonna have this game. I'm absolutely gonna have this these probability matrices on hand because um even though I run it run my games pretty loose. There are times where I still need a quick, a mm -hmm. quick answer, and if I can't come up with it fast enough, I can just grab a table, hit roll, roll some dice, and uh, and grab that one idea, and I'm up and running. So, um, yeah. I think there's, I mean, this is a 320 odd page book. I mean, it's a digest size book, so it's, it's it's thicker than the player's guide, thicker than the game master guide. Same same format because we really want want to go for that digest size that you can just throw into a bag with your uh, laptop and go go find a nice uh, coffee shop or something and go write and, and create stories. Um, so one of the I, other things too, that you asked for us to do, which again, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Josh, um, Josh on is we wanted to create, we understand people are visual learners nowadays. So people could read about game mechanics, but this is going to be the first book that really dives into flow charts. So that once you read the game mechanics, or even if you don't, people could actually like print out the flow chart 
for themselves and be like, what do I do next? Oh, there it is. Boom, 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 boom. So I know we were really flow chart heavy in this book for the, for the major game mechanics. And that's, I think, going to be fun. And I think it might even inspire, you know, people in the 2D20 system to maybe, you know, try to flow chart out some of the mechanics. So mm-hmm. I'm proud of how that came out. Yeah, for Star Trek Adventures, we started experimenting with that um, back in the Klingon Core Rulebook um, because that was an opportunity. That was like our first opportunity. Well, I guess it was our second opportunity to really kind of do a top-down refresh of the of the Core Rulebook and and try to like not so much change the rules, but try to like change the presentation to make it a little less text-heavy and a little easier to maybe understand, especially for a new generation of gamer coming in who really wants that more visual uh, visual aid. And, uh, you know, because like, I mean, these days to, to ask somebody to, to read a 400 page book, uh, you know, this gigantic tome and try to absorb a game. Nobody wants to do that. I mean, right. it's just you want to get to the game. You want to get to you want to get to playing as soon as possible. And that's why like board games and card games, they have like a three to five page rule book and you're off and running. You know, if you can't explain your game in three pages, then you need to rethink it. Right. Uh, but for RPGs, it's always been kind of a different beast where you're the expectation is you're buying these 200, 300 page books. And, uh, and and like one poor sot, the game master has to absorb all of it and then not only absorb all of it and understand it, but then they have to be able to teach it to their players. Because by and large, you know, I'll be honest, I'm guilty. I'm a player. I don't read the I don't read the player's guide. I don't read the player's handbook. I only read enough to know what my character can do. And then, yeah. oh, yeah, maybe I'll flip through it while I'm waiting for someone else to take their turn. <laughs> and be like, oh, I didn't know this was in there. Oh, this is cool. Oh, gosh, I've been playing this rule all wrong. Uh, but anyway, uh, I digress. Um, Good. Well, let's jump into chapters one and two then. Yeah. Let's let's do this because we really wanted everyone to understand the th- the thinking behind Captain's Log, who it's serving, but also the benefits, of course, to longtime fans of Star Trek Adventures. But let's talk about um, chapter one. What do you you wrote chapter one, Jim? So talk to us about that. Yeah, let me just say real quick with the introduction. The introduction does its job. It's introducing you to the book. No, no big surprise there. It's, it's giving you a little taste of the franchise. Tells you what's in the book. Uh, but importantly, especially for new fans uh, or, or, or curious, casual fans of Star Trek, um, and then even even you know more experienced fans of Star Trek who maybe needed a little bit of a refresher, uh, we did put in a two-page sidebar in here about like where to start. What episodes should you watch to kind of get a flavor for um, for the for the franchise, right? For solo and, RPGs specifically, and, and especially you know, specifically yeah. oriented to character 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 episodes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, no matter what series you like, there's a little bit of advice in here about the different episodes that you you might want to consider looking now. Of course, Google being Google and the internet being the internet, there is no shortage of best of episodes out there that you can research and do on your own, right? But with the streaming and with the easy ex- easy accessibility of Star Trek out there now, you know, use that introduction kind of like to give you a chance to go watch a couple episodes and then get into the into the weeds here. Uh, and then we start with chapter one. And uh, again, those of you familiar with the player guide and game master guide are going to get what this is. But for those of you who are new to it or casual, maybe this is your first time. What we did is we really tried to distill Star Trek down into like like 10 key points. What is Star Trek? What makes Star Trek Star Trek unique from all the different science fiction and fantasy franchises that are out there over the last you know, 60, 70 years? How is it? You know, why? What, what makes it special and unique and why do we keep coming back to it? Why do people keep being drawn into Star Trek? So we spend a little bit of time talking about, well, what is Star Trek? And we talk about 10 key points about Star Trek. Um, I don't know that we want to go into a lot of detail, but, you know, just, just the key tropes, the key setting elements, the thing, the things that, like, if you think about Star Trek, these are probably the things that percolate up uh, that make you think about. Uh, and then after that, uh, we take that and then we we put the role playing lens on it. We put the the solo storytelling lens on it and say, okay, so now that you have an idea of what Star Trek is or what it could be, or in our opinion, what it is, I mean, there's no one definition of what Star Trek is. Everyone brings their own idea to it, right? Um, so so what is Captain's Log? So we we offer you ten key points about what we think Captain's Log is and how that ties into what the ten things about Star Trek are. And um, you know the the key points here. I, again, I'm not going to go through them. This is a, uh, we, we present a streamlined version of 2D20. So we took the, the Star Trek Adventures rule set and I, I, I'm not gonna say we simplified it. I'm not gonna say we dumbed it down, but what we did is we streamlined it. We, we, we cut out some of the elements of it that we didn't think were really necessary for a solo RPG experience. Uh, we kept a lot of it. I mean, it, it should be a fairly seamless transition to go from Captain's Log to Star Trek Adventures or from Star Trek Adventures to Captain's Log. Like you can port your characters back and forth. Should be pretty seamless, but I'm really curious to hear what the fans 
react to it, right? Well, I want to add to that too, is as I was playing, as I was game testing this and I was having the conversation with some of the other play testers, Mm -hmm. there could be some groups and we talk about it in here. We're going to talk about when we get to the chapter on co-op play and group play, um, that actually could run a, uh, if they don't want dice heavy mechanics and stuff like that. And they really are more into the narrative flow and they're willing to let loose a little bit and let probability take its course, the dice, there's going to be groups who could play this. In fact, we tested it and I actually, the current tabletop RPG group that I'm play tested it with some of the players who are actually named in the book. I want to thank them. Paxton Griffin, Matt Wonderland. Uh, they were play testers on this. They grew it into a team game and they've actually decided sometimes we're going to use the probability matrices to make decisions for us as opposed to getting really dice heavy. And and for some of our players, um, I have some players where English is not their first language and others who have some uh, reading and writing isn't their strong suit due to some learning. uh, uh, They have different learning styles. This is actually working some of this adaptation and we're going to talk about that in other episodes, but I think that was kind of um, cool with this is that the rules were adapted. So yeah, if you, if you're familiar with the 2d 20, it's going to be easy for you to see where, where this comes from. But honestly, I I'm curious to see if we see groups adopting this system as their chosen way to roll the dice. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah I'm really curious. In fact, uh, because I've had, you know, we've been working on this for a while. I've had the final in hand for a while. I got the page proofs a couple of weeks ago. You know, I've been doing some, like in what level spare time I have, <laughs> uh, I've been doing a little bit of independent um, playing on it on my own, having some fun with it, creating characters and doing some little scenes. Um, but I also have taken the time to kind of reflect on my more recent Star Trek Adventures campaign that I ran a couple of years ago. We did 30 odd sessions and I really thought about that campaign and I thought about how the players were playing the game and and what um what game mechanics they were using a lot and which ones they very rarely used and i think if we had had this two years ago i think we probably would have been using the captain's log rule set more than star trek adventures only because there's so many great uh, mechanical components in star trek adventures that if you want to go a more crunchy game you can absolutely do it if you want a more rules light version, then you just you know don't use everything. But there was plenty of sessions where my group, like we didn't use determination. We barely use momentum and threat. We hardly ever use our talents. And I'm like, well, you know, that's, that's mm-hmm. that, not, I mean, not to spoil it because we'll talk about the, the rules chapter in a future episode. But like largely that's what we're doing with Captain Zog here is we're really focusing on the, the values, the focuses, the character and the storytelling and the storytelling potential of throwing characters into situations and then seeing what happens, throwing in some random probability tables in there to see, to help spark ideas. But like, honestly, the group I had, I think we could have done Captain's Log as a collaborative storytelling almost without even a GM. I think it would have, I think it would have worked. Uh, So I'm really, really curious to hear what people uh, come up with. I I just got to say, you know, I've been playing RPGs for 30 or long years and um, (laughs) this, this for introducing new players, is really interesting, especially you could use this game set and again, we'll go into it. You could use this rule set to introduce newbie players and then slowly add in the more crunchy mechanics of 2D of, of, of Star Trek. We'll talk, we'll talk about that when we get to the rules chapter, because I, I, I want people to hear what we argued about and talked about <laughs> so that I, I think that I would love to hear their feedback on that. All right. Yeah. So, so last thing I'll say about chapter one, I, again, we're talking about you know the 10 things that make Star Trek, Star Trek. And then the 10 things that are really key to Captain's Log. The, the one the of the 10 things that we talked about Captain's Log, the one I the one I really want to call out is the limitless potential. Like, like this is a toolkit. Again, you know, we've really leaned into the toolkit philosophy for Star Trek Adventures. Every book we release, more tools for you and your players and your game masters to play with, do something with, add it to the franchise, add it to your campaign, add it to your ongoing episodes. Just do something cool with the tools. So the, the limitless potential, and it's not just because of Captain's Log, but it's because of Star Trek as a whole. The whole franchise, 60 years worth, 11 series, 13 movies, whatever, thousands of novels and comic books and video games. And I mean, there's just so much Star Trek, right? There is, even with all that, there is still your imagination that you can spark with this book or without this book or with other books. So really, the limitless potential, like, there is literally nothing that you can't do with this book. I, I want to... 
add to you could when we designed this book i know one of my goals was to say even if you're not playing star trek you should be able to use the, the how to tell a story and the probability matrices so that if you want to play any type of science fiction that you could still use this. And I'm hoping to hear, because we know we've heard stuff about the player's guide and game master's guide where people who don't even play Star Trek are picking it up just to learn how to be good players or good game masters. So that was really some of the inspiration in here too, is we want this to be just a phenomenal solo RPG book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and not just, yeah. I mean, obviously we wanted it to be a phenomenal Star Trek Mm -hmm. solo RPG book, but I think the, the probability, the probability matrices by themselves could absolutely easily port over to li- literally any other game. I mean, yeah. you can, you can, I mean, of course, I mean, I've talked about this at length too, right? Like Star Trek somehow is a franchise where you can tell virtually any genre of story. You can do romance, you can do horror, you can do science fiction, fantasy, movies, yeah. uh-huh. mysteries, romance. I mean, there's just so many, uh, you think of all the random subgenres, urban fantasy, uh, paranormal, um, you know, cyberpunk, whatever. Um, body horror, whatever you're into, right? That you could find a way to to twist it into Star Trek somehow. Yeah, um, and uh, and and but and we dreamed. I mean, we could have literally done 300 additional pages on even more probability matrices, more more random tables. So we really yeah. do open up the door here, saying create your own. So we talk to people about how to create your own, and also if there's other supplements you know out there, you can now drag that into your RPG game. And really, this is just the jumping point for the ultimate r- random table collection. Yeah, I, and we'll talk about this in a future episode, but I, I still I still have, I, I hate to say it, but I still have so much regret for the stuff we had to cut out of this book Yeah, um, because we had so much great content from so many great writers. And I was like, I got to find a way to fit this all in. And I had, we, we were trying to get it down to 300 uh, pages just to make it, you know, workable. And I was like, no, we just can't, we can't do it in 300 because of, because of the mandate we had, right? When we did the whole feasibility study, we like, we knew it had to be a core book. We knew it had to be aimed at new fans. We knew it had to cover everything all in one shot. And, and just because of Star Trek being Star Trek, like I knew that we, we needed more space to do everything we wanted to do. This could have, you're right, Michael, this could have easily, we, I mean, if we, had, if we had had free reign, we could have made this a 500 page book without. That's what continuing missions is for. If people want to submit <laughs> exactly. after, after people get exactly. this, if you want to submit the yeah. ra- random tables you create, we'll drop them in continuing drop missions. In. Uh, yeah, for people to use yeah absolutely anyway so all that being said uh so yeah chapter one all about uh you know what's what's star trek what's star, what's captain's log um and then we go, we'll we'll talk about chapter two here uh because again chapter two um this is a chapter that i think casual fans and new fans will probably appreciate this is giving you kind of like a thousand foot view high level overview of all the essential bits of what makes star trek star trek it talks about the society it talks about re- how religion is handled in the setting talking about like how the economy is handled, uh, the technology, like how do phasers work? How do, how do tricorders work? How do sh- weapons work? How do shields work? How do, uh, you know, how's the uh, universal translator work? How do star dates work? Just all this basic stuff and basic, I, I say basic because I've been a Star Trek fan for my entire life, but the, the, the stuff that, I mean, this is all the world building stuff, right? If you're a writer, this is all the world building stuff. This is what makes the Star Trek setting different from, Doctor Who, d- different from Stargate, different from Dune, different from whatever. Because if you're telling stories in this setting, you, you got to have a baseline, right? So what we're doing in this chapter two, we're presenting you that baseline. And um, of course, you know, there are a whole encyclopedias and nonfiction books all about this stuff that we could not possibly hope to cram into one book in addition to all the rules and all the probability tables and stuff. So, right, this is, you know, at, by design, it's a, like a 10,000 foot view. We, we dip a little deeper into a couple of things, but for the most part, we're trying to give you a baseline understanding, like here's how the setting works, here how, how things in the setting operate, here's what your character probably knows about the setting it, intuitively, like you may not know it, but your character knows it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then we just go on from there, so. Um, yeah, you know, I think too, like for instance, you know, you, we have the Starfleet protocols in there that <clears throat> some basic things, you know, people should know about the prime directive yeah. and also understanding that Star Trek follows naval tradition. Um, and so it's it's a it's a quick uh, uh, 
what do you call it? Cliff notes on <laughs> 56 years of, of Star Trek history. So you have the cliff notes here just to give you some general. And as myself and Jim always say, do not get stuck to canon. The RPG is for you to have fun. And now it's even freer from solo RPGs. There's no one to criticize you, right? Like it, it, Jim always talks about you know, when you have a gaming group and there's that one Star Trek expert. Or, 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 that, that never happened in episode four, verse nine. You know, so yeah. so in solo RPG, you don't have to worry about that at all. You are on your own. Have a ball. There are no judge, there is no judgment, you know. Right, right. And even though chapter two is I'll be honest, it's fairly extensive, right? Because we tried to pack in as much as we could in the space that we had. Don't let it overwhelm you because like all you need is the basics. If you've watched one episode, you you probably kind of get the gist mm -hmm. of what they're doing. Um, and then just like like gradually read it at your leisure. Read it, read a page here, read your page there. You know, don't don't feel overwhelmed. And I know that's easy to say, but like really honestly, truly, to have fun with this, just jump in. Just have fun and, and get into it. Um the people who wrote it too, you know, I'm going to going into 2.4 about the eras of play John Kennedy, you know, that's adapted from a lot of the work John Kennedy did. Who's, who's I, I guess I'll call them the historian of Star Trek adventures um, because uh, they continually uh, write in the different books about the eras of play. So again, another great cliff notes about the different eras, because anybody who watches the show knows that it spans now over a thousand years of history and the different shows are in different eras. So, so you have the option to choose what era. And again, you have the cliff notes here about each one of those eras that's been on TV. And you have the option to also shoot something that is in one of the lost eras, something that hasn't shown up on TV. Um, you're welcome to do that too. It's your game. Yeah, I mean, literally any any period in Star Trek is at open season. We 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 discuss everything from from first contact when when Cochran launches off from the Phoenix all the way out to the thirty second century with Discovery, which we're discovering now in season four and in season five. Um, you know, that's a pretty big span of time for a franchise <laughs> to play with, and there's still huge swaths of time within that timeline that that the producers haven't even touched yet. Right. I mean, and I know we talked about that on other episodes. There's a there's a couple of different lost eras now. Um, and then plus there's that whole chunk of time between the 25th century and the 32nd century. We know there's a temporal time war in there somewhere, but then there's still, you know, 400 years there that just have been glossed over. So, um, that, I mean, really, there's literally anything you can do that you want and you can you can ignore canon. You want to do your own version of the Dominion War? No one's going to stop you. Go for it. Yeah. You, want, you want to do you want to tell the story of the Romulan Earth War uh, back in the early 20, you know, 2200s? Sure, do that. Uh, if you want to do your own version of the Enterprise instead of Archer, it's your captain. Make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, even even I the, the solo RPG game I I've been playing, I'm playing it so they're so far out doing just it's a colony ship you know they help with colony support that i purposely in my mind is making it they don't even know who kirk is imagine that the the, the galaxy is so big that it is possible that there are captains who don't know who captain kirk or spock is and so i'm really putting them out there on their own so that i'm freed from all those reins and they could have their own little chunk of the galaxy and I, that's why i encourage people to do too just have a ball and see where the dice take you um with this and then and then in addition to just times to play uh you know eras of play there's also styles of play so that's an adaptation from the game master's guide where um it covers the what we've seen currently on tv including if you want to play um, an unsanctioned game meaning you're not starfleet you're not klingon empire you could be whatever you want in any corner of the universe you want to do so we we give some options and some questions to kind of provoke your thoughts like okay how do you know what are some of the issues i'll be dealing with if i'm close to home if i'm far from home if i'm in another time period um it's all in there just to get your juices flowing yeah and actually you, you raise a good point michael i know we'll talk about this in a future episode but i want to just kind of tease it now that even though this book is called captain's log and the conceit is that you will probably be creating your own captain and going on your own adventures as the captain there is absolutely nothing stopping you from playing a junior officer, a civilian, a Klingon warrior, a Jem Hadar soldier. Like, like seriously, I, when we get to the when we get to the character generation chapter, we'll talk about this in more detail about all the different species that we were able to cram into this book. But like, obviously, the 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 central conceit of the vast majority of Star Trek is that you've got Starfleet characters on Starfleet ships doing Federation's you know work. Um, that's what most of the series are centered on. That's what the game conceit is centered on as well that's the baseline that we're going with for this game is that you're probably playing a starfleet officer maybe a captain on a ship 
boldly going and exploring strange new worlds and new life and everything else. But because <laughs> Star Trek is 60 years old and we've seen such a wealth of diversity in characters on the show and in the novels and the comic books and yada, 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 um, you can literally play any character. Like if you want to play Nog with Captain's Log, sure, do it. You want to play Jake, go do it. You want to play Neelix, yep. You want to play some random binary, uh, binar twins, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, truly, the 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 creativity is boundless. So, like, you know, maybe you're frustrated that you can't find a group who wants to do like a real heavy, dramatic Dominion War thing where you're on the front lines all the time, and maybe they don't, they, they just don't want, they want that they want they don't want that tone in their game, right? This will scratch your itch. You can go do whatever you want to do with this. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, I gotta tell you some true stories yeah. just to whet people's appetites. And then we'll, we'll, we'll do I'm going to tell the story. And before we wrap up today, we'll go yeah. kind of preview what the different chapters are. Cause I know they can't see it yet or they might see it. Yeah. They, by this time they by may, time some, out, yeah. may have seen it. Um, but my wife is watching me play this sometimes because I'm sitting on the couch by myself or, you know, it, it was great. It was a winter um, when I started play testing this with a friend um, who had never played RPG before. Um, but my, my own story is, She'll crack up at me because I sit there and I'll roll the dice on my story. And I'll be like, no way. And she's like, <laughs> she's like what are you doing? I'm like, I'm playing out. I'm playing captain's log. She's like, uh-huh. how are you surprising yourself? I said, cause, I said, cause if this happened, that means this happened. Oh my goodness. And I'm sitting here writing it down. You know, I like writing, writing. So I yeah. use it to start writing. I'm like, no way. So that's my personal story. My wife's sitting there like, she can't understand how I'm having so much fun by myself. Even though my mom, when I was growing up, she would never ground me in my room because she says it sounded like I had friends in there with me. Cause I was having so much fun by myself. Self. So this is just carrying up my 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 child itself. But then my friend Paxton Griffin, who who um, went ahead and play tested this, didn't know anything about Star Trek. Twenty two years old, um, uh, doesn't play tabletop RPG. We went on a hiking trip together and I said, we're going to go on a hiking trip and at night we're going to play this game. And I brought it in copy paper form, copied it out in two days. We played four episodes. He was r- literally running around the house in some action scenes, throwing dice. We, we we went hiking the next day, took the dice with us. And then when we didn't have dice the first day, we played Rochambeau in order to decide probability on it. But but now he's a regular player at the tabletop RPG and he's bringing people into the game. Young people. He's like, he's like, no, you got to play this. You don't understand. You don't understand. And now he's watching. He's watched Strange New Worlds. That's his favorite show. My point being is, um, we always talk about improv and karaoke, but it's so nice to have a game that excites you, that you have control over, that's unexpected. Video games are predictable generally, you know, but this is unpredictable fun. And I'm going to look forward as we talk about this book. And of course, now that we're adding this to our continuing conversations, where we'll be talking about Captain's Log, I, I want to hear everyone's stories because it's definitely one of the most imagine it, it's I get to play like I'm a kid again, imagination by myself. Um, and it's fun watching people adopt this yeah I, I, again i think you know as, as we're wrapping up here this is a product that i don't think anybody saw coming or or or, or is even remotely talked about coming um just in the zeitgeist of the social media and the forums and stuff that we've been on for a couple of years you know for several years now um no one has seriously even asked me hey you should do a star trek solo rpg or when's the solo RPG version going to come out? No one's asked that. They've talked around about it and said, oh, gosh, I wish I could play this by myself because I can't find anybody to play with. <laughs> I saw a couple right. questions on social yeah. media, actually, on Discord and on Facebook. Yeah. People ask, would you ever do a solo RPG? And you were dead quiet. Yeah. yeah I've been very careful not to say anything because I don't yeah, want to tip my hand. I didn't want to tip my hand. But it, so I'm really, really curious. But uh, um, I am also super excited because I think this is going to spark so much creativity for people um uh, i just can't wait to see what, what, what how it works especially with technology now michael mm-hmm. because you got you got twitch and discord and um i mean even like uh i'm starting to to focus on uh, tiktok a little bit i think being able to do a scene a short scene with captain's log would probably work within you know the two to five minute i mean five minutes is probably too much for a tiktok but just to get the spark going you could probably do that on a tiktok in a few in just like a couple 
like just do oh, a yeah. couple of rolls on a probability. I mean, I'm getting into the weeds, but uh, no, I have some. I'm just curious I, to see what yeah, happens. Yeah, no. So, well, people have to look go- coming up. We're going to be having the people who not only help design the game rules, but also the writers. Um, yeah. They're going to come up. The, the chapters we're going to be covering is chapter three, which is reporting for duties. So. <laughs> Sorry, that is the uh, how you develop a character, how you character creation there. Josh Allen did a lot of work on that. So we're going to have him on. Um, Then we're going to talk about your home among the stars. And of course, that would be the ship. Um, Aaron Paul Yeh was tortured because he actually had to truncate so much of his work from the other stuff to make it so that you could get a ship on a quick roll and you're going to see the game mechanics about how you use a ship, which is different um, in captain's log. So we'll have Aaron on for that. And then uh, chapter five rules of play. We're going to be talking, we have Allison Seib. We have um, uh, Josh Allen again, who helped with that. Al Spader commented on it a lot and helped game test that that's rules of play. Chapter six is playing captain's log. So that's the chapter where we're talking about the narration and really how to narrate the story. And what are some of the key elements to writing and, it's a it's an education you you're gonna you're gonna play but you're gonna learn at the same time about what works um in good storytelling and then finally the appendices we go into the appendices um and we'll have an episode breaking down the tables and how to use them and maybe how to create your own um you know just all kinds of ideas maybe even other ref um Maybe we bring up other books you could add on that, you know, aren't even Star Trek, that that you, there's a lot of random indexes out there, especially if you go to like drive through RPG um, for random tables. So we're, we're going to cover this book and, and really s- hopefully see how it takes to the industry. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm not even thinking about the industry. <laughs> I'm just thinking about Star Trek. Uh, but, you know, you, you mentioned at the top of the show that you can't remember a major franchise doing something like this. And I don't think I've I don't think I've thought about that. And I think you might be right, but uh we'll see. We'll if see I'm wrong, happens. someone will say they'll say. So so uh so gratitude. I think we can head into gratitude now. I'm gonna go back and um, you know, this time I'm gonna thank everyone who was so patient this was the very first time i've ever been a lead writer on any kind of game system <clears throat> so um I, I i gotta thank uh josh allen allison Seib, you jim samantha webb rachel cruz nathan dowdell keith garrett john kennedy fred love chris mccarver aaron paul yay jacob ross and al spader who went down this road and i i i think the product is great but of course i have to because if i don't i'll be depressed and crying to myself but i'm really hoping that every all this all these great creatives um coming together have done a product that's going to live up to the star trek adventures legacy yeah and uh for my gratitude uh first i'm going to say thank you to, to you michael for being for willing to take on the lead lead writer role it, it helped me in ways that you probably can't imagine i mean at, at the time we were working on captain's log i had um three other very major projects i was trying to juggle at the same time and uh, fairly early on, fortunately, fairly early on, I, uh, I checked in with myself and I said, I cannot do these four books by myself. Uh, so I, I took the first two on on my own. Um, I asked you to be the lead writer on this one. I asked Al Spader to be the lead writer on another one just to get through the the, the hurdles of those things. Uh, I'm not going to do it again. I mean, not to say that I'm not going to ask people to be lead writers again, but to do that many major projects all at the same time. Um, I, I'm I just, I've worked out my schedule a little bit differently so that we don't have to do that again, um, or at least, you know, do it over a longer span of time. Um, but, uh, so gratitude to you for, for, for keeping things going, do, you know, managing the play tests, doing all that work that you did. Um, I know, I know a lot of it was, um, unheralded and, um, I mean, there's always more work that goes into it than you. I'm going to play anyways. So might as well. Have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So grateful for you. So thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, also, I want to thank um, all the storytellers, all the teachers that I've learned from over the years, everybody who's written a book or written advice on books, all the teachers I've had uh, in writing, um, everything you've done has percolated into my brain and has come out in the RPG, not just this book, but all the other Star Trek Adventures books. Uh, we put all that lore and training and knowledge in there. Hopefully, we're helping the next generation of storytellers uh, to tell amazing stories. So uh, thanks to all those who have come before. Hopefully we're doing a good job paying it forward and, uh, and, you know, we're just doing the best we can. So thank you for that. Uh, and then of course the fans, uh, thank you to the fans. Uh, if, if you weren't in love with this game and in love with the franchise, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be experimenting with something like this. This is a pretty significant, uh, investment of time and effort and money 
uh, core books are no are no joke. Like they're a big deal. Like it's just a lot of time and effort and money involved in creating a core rule book. And this really truly is a core rule book, even though it's not what you would expect from a traditional core rule book. This is a this is a complete game unto itself in a standalone single volume. So um, grateful that Medifius was willing to take a chance on it and and to see how it works. Hopefully, we'll, it'll do gangbusters, but you know we won't know until it comes out. Uh, but uh, hopefully, um, it does well. But yeah, thanks to Medifius and thanks to the fans especially, uh, and then Paramount, right? I mean, thanks to them for for having no problems with us going down this road. You know, they're they're eager to see what it does. Because it's it, it will stand to bring more fans into the franchise, and that's always net positive. We're always bringing more people into the Star Trek family. So, uh, can't wait to see what happens. And one last announce, uh, last announcement, because it might happen. It might happen. This this show is coming out on July fourteenth, and there's possibility. Now, I'm going to be at Gen Con in Indianapolis in August, and there's a chance the hard copy for Captain Law could be there for sale. Right. There's a chance. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is this will have gone on pre-order before this episode airs. So you will definitely have the PDF at hand, um, uh, which, you know, is great. Um, and we're I mean, like right now, it's it's early June right now when we're recording this. It'll be mid-July when this actually comes out. I think the books will be in America by then. But caveat, pandemic, global shipping and distribution being what it is. There are any number of hangups along the way that we cannot possibly control. Yeah. So I if it's the there, the intention yeah. is for it to be there. And if it is in fact there, and you are in fact able to cop to gain a copy, Michael will be there, the lead writer of this book. He will be there. He will sign your books. He will ask you to sign his book. Thank you. <laughs> and somehow, some way, I need to talk to you, Michael, because if I can get you a copy, I want you to get everybody to sign it for me. I will so mail it to me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just wait till next year because I'm planning on being at Gen Con next year. Um, okay. I know it's a year after the launch. It won't be quite as hot or quite as big of a deal. Um, but who knows, right? This is this. No, is I'll definitely be, if I'm there yeah. and the book's there, you're going to have signed copies. But uh, you're going to have every. Uh, but I'll make sure <laughs> it happens. Want, just just one uh, yeah. signed copy. <laughs> I'll make I'll make sure it happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, anyway. I, just. Just for those who might be there, um, I'd be excited to see you. Whether or not the book's there or not, of course, we, we're excited to see you at the Modifius um, booth. I'll be trying to play games. I've never been to a Gen Con before, so I'll be trying to play games. Um, I might run some games, and we might might do a panel. I don't know. We got it. I got late. I didn't know I was going, um, but it would be great if if we have an audience for people who have questions about Star Trek Adventures. Um, in Dream World, I always like to do Dream World. I don't know how the technology works out, but if me and Jim could somehow run a run a film a pod one of our podcasts from there or even do something live um i'll try to make it happen i don't know but this is exciting for me to go to gen con for the very first time my yeah. first convention since post pandemic and yeah. especially if i'm there to actually release um not only uh uh captain's log but lower deck hard copies that that'll be really cool to experience so, cool. so everyone please come say hi to me i would i would love that yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe if nothing else, maybe you can FaceTime me in on an iPad or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, Thank cool. So it's exciting summer, keeping us very busy. Thank you, Jim. And yeah. for everybody, IDIC, more options for play, Captain's Log. Yeah, live long and prosper. Be safe, be well, have fun, be creative. 